Hello, everybody. So today we're going to look at using this SQL light data reader in better detail. We're going to see how this object pulls data out of our SQL database. And I'm going to quickly go over how we can null out a field in this genre in this enum, right? It's an enum. Typically, you can't have null fields in an enum unless you do something beforehand. So jumping right into it, the first thing we will cover is basically everything inside of this 43 to 61 range. That's all I'm looking to cover. We just want to talk about how it's pulling this data. So the first thing you do is you create a reader object. And inside our while loop, very similar to how you read a file, it's going to look for end of file when you look for a file in the reader object, it's going to keep reading and it'll eventually return false once it reaches the last row. If there's not another row to read, this returns false and the while loop finishes. Inside of our while loop, we are pulling the four columns of data that I have on the right here. So this is the query that we're running, select star from books, and we have four columns. We have ID, title, author, and genre. So those are our four columns. And as you can see here, I have ID, title, author, and genre string, which is where I'm saving the data. But how am I pulling that data? Well, the first thing we do, we use our reader object, and then we say which variable type we're going to pull out of a column here. So my first column here is integers, which is why I'm using int32. And then we have get string for the next three columns, for title, for author, and for genre. I'm not a big fan of how it's, um, how it's displaying the data there. So I'm going to quickly open up my DB Lite browser here, and we'll run the same query. it's a little bit easier to, to read if we look at it in this column form, right? We have ID, title, author, genre, a little bit easier to read. So here, uh, the first thing we're doing is we're getting the reader object and we say what type of data we're going to pull from that column. And inside of it, if I mouse over here, you can see it says retrieves the column as an int. And you can see inside of the method get int32, it's expecting an int i. So inside of our get int32, we have this get ordinal. But before we cover what get ordinal does, I just want to show if I replace this with a zero, that is effectively what get ordinal is doing. It's getting the zero with piece of information, the zero with column. That's what get in 32 is going to do. It's getting the zero with column. This, this one is getting the first column. So if I, if I replaced all of these with zero, one, two, and three, we would be getting the same information. Hopefully that gives a better insight into how it's pulling the data. Now let's break it down a little bit further. Let's dive into what this is doing. Uh, oh, and I can actually I can actually show that that's what it's doing with this right here. We have the summary. If you just control click on the method, you'll open up this portion of the code. Retrieves the column as an integer. Index of the column. So it's like an index of an array. It's get, grabbing the index of the column grabbing the index of the column. This method is grabbing the data at the index of the column. So you can think of this reader.get and then the variable type as kind of an array. And then inside of it here, rather than putting 0, 1, 2, and 3, you get a little bit more stability just in case some of the column positions change for whatever reason or I don't know, some funny business might happen. Someone renames a column or this is a, a far more explicit way of saying, I want the column that's named ID. So get ordinal will return 
the value of your array or your column, your, your reader object, based on the name that you provide to it. So if I provide the name ID, it's going to give me the column integer that the reader object's looking for to retrieve that data from the column. And then we just repeat the while loop with the reader object. So it's going to do the same thing for each of these four pieces of columns, four pieces of data, it's gonna do it for each column, right? So this, this right here is returning an integer, zero, one, two, three, because I only have four pieces of data, and then this uses zero, one, two, or three to read either the one, the title, the author, or the genre, and then it's going to just repeat for each row. And then finally, after we pull that data, save it into a variable, I throw it into my list. I throw it into what my final result needs to be. So I keep adding a new book in this case for my list. I keep adding a new book every time I pull this data of column, or to pull this row of data. And then the last thing I want to cover really quick is the enum try parse here. So the try parse is just confirming that what I have here in the last columns, what I have here in the last columns is actually a value that exists within the enum. It's checking if the value exists within the enum. If it doesn't exist, you're going to have some problems when you're trying to uh, use that, that enum, but you can null out the field. And the way you null out this field is simply adding a question mark. I'm, I've moved to my book class here where I'm defining my enum. This is the, the genre is the name of my enum here. If you put a question mark at the end of your enum variable type, that will allow this to be a null field. So it just means I can have an empty field for the genre. Say it's a genre that uh, maybe has two values or you're just not sure about the genre or for whatever reason there's a value you'd like to put in that's null. This gives you the ability to pull a null value in there, putting that question mark uh, to emphasize that, let's just delete the question mark and then we should see an error appear in our book repository right here. So it's saying I can't null out the field because I've removed that question mark here. So bringing the question mark back, my code allows me to create a book object. It allows me to create a book object that has a null field. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, the two main points of emphasis are using the SQL data, SQLite data reader object and the enum null field. And I hope that was instructive. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.